Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It, and today we're going to be talking about uploading all of that Marlin firmware to SKR boards via a Raspberry Pi. So let's go! So we've talked a little bit about compiling Marlin and getting it ready to go onto a big tree tech SKR board. Now we talked about the 1.3 and the mini. The process is really similar for all of the SKR boards. So we're talking like the new 1.4, the pro, the compiling process is the same. The uploading process is the same. So let's talk a little bit how to get that firmware onto the board. So before we jump into using a Raspberry Pi to get our firmware on, let's talk a little bit more about uploading the firmware. First step is going to be finding that build folder in your Marlin environment. So when you hit build, it's going to build a firmware.bin. When you plug your board into your computer, you're going to see a thumb drive show up, basically a USB drive, mine's labeled F. On that, you'll see firmware.cur. And what that means is that it's written the last firmware file that was on it. Uh, it tells you the date modified, so that's when I did it. But we're just going to go bounce to my C drive here. So we'll go here, and then we'll go open window, and then I'm going to go into the firmware. We were just building the firmware, and it finished. Uh, so we're going to go to our root Marlin. So we have Marlin 2.x here. Uh, then we go PIO into the build folder, into the board folder, and here you'll find a firmware.bin. Now here's where the hard part comes in. You click and hold and drag and drop. It will copy the firmware bin to the controller. Now, if you were to power off the controller and turn it back on, that's when it installs the firmware. I don't want this firmware on this particular board, so I'm just gonna delete it. But you'll notice that if it powered on, powered back on, you won't see firmware bin anymore, you just see firmware cur and the process is complete. Super simple. All right, that's without the Pi, but let's let's do this with the Pi. Let's uh, get the firmware onto the board while we're sitting on the couch and we don't even have to get up and plug anything in. That's the goal. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop over to WinSCP. Now WinSCP is just a FTP client but we're going to need it to update some firmware. So just grab that, download it, install it. Now, if you have a favorite FTP client that you like, go for it. Go, go ahead and download it, um, FileZilla works. But basically, we just need a small client and that's why I like when SCP. It's small, it works. So download that. So the next thing we're gonna do is install a little piece of software onto the Pi that it's called USB mount and basically it mounts the USB drive of the motherboard, so of our SKR controller, so the 1.3, and it's gonna mount it in the Pi in a way that we can actually use it and see it. So we come here uh, and this is GitHub for Octoprint's firmware updater, but um, it works very well on its own and I've had more success not using the updater than I have using the updater. So that's why I'm showing you this way, but feel free, all the information is here. You can configure the updater as well. But let's stick with the FTP client for now. So we're gonna have to use some SSH commands to get in. So basically I use PowerShell to do all my SSH and PowerShell is built into Windows. It's just a client. If you don't have PowerShell, you can get putty and I'll put a link to putty down in the description there but basically you have to know a few things about where you're trying to connect the username so I'm gonna go SSH not SHH SSH so my username I'm gonna put an at symbol and then I type the IP address of the Pi I'm trying to connect to so for me I'm going to do number nine now when I hit enter it's gonna ask me, do I trust that this, this is the printer? Yes, I do. I trust that I've typed my IP address in, but if you type something that you're not sure of or you're going somewhere, always answer no because it's a, it's a security check and if you're not sure where you're going, don't go there. So now you can see, it's just asking me for a password here. I'm gonna type in my password and hopefully you've changed your Raspberry Pi password. Um, but if you haven't, I'll leave the defaults in the description as well. So I did it the first try, ooh, so good. 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our PowerShell and we're going to take our other window here and we're just going to move commands into it. So you can literally copy and paste. So I already have an install, but copy, paste, USB mount, you hit enter. It'll ask you for your password again, type it in. It'll just download and it says, oh, hey, I'm already here. But on yours, it might say yes or it'll just keep going, which is fine. Now, we're going to take the second command. So the first command was just an install. apt-get install USB mount. Simple. This command, we're going to actually configure a little bit in the file. So if you come back to your terminal window, so the SSH client, and then we're just going to paste our step number two in there, and I'm going to hit enter. And you can see here that it says find FS mount options. That's usually at the bottom. So if you're inside your terminal, just use the arrow keys to go up and down. And then you can see here at the bottom, there's an FS mount options. Now this was not here before, so that's the difference. I've already copied this piece in, so this piece in the web browser, I've moved over there and copied. Make sure it's in quotes. Um, if you want to be really sure, you can copy the whole line and just in the text editor, delete this line. Now it's a very simple text editor. You're just going to use backspace, delete, up and down arrows to navigate. It's not like Office or Word or anything like that. But once you get the line in there, you're going to hit Control plus X. And on yours, if you make a change, so I'm just going to go back in. I'll make a quick change here. So let me add a space right here that wasn't there before. Control X. And then it asks you, are you sure you want to save? Yes or no. You just hit, you just hit Y to save. You hit end to cancel. So I'm, I'm going to hit end, you hit Y. And once you do that, it's saved. On to the next step. So we just have to configure a few system things uh, for our Linux to work properly. So if we copy this uh, system control here, and we're just going to paste that in. And literally, copy and paste out, hit enter, super easy. It says right here, it should, say, it should say service mount flag shared. And it does, you hit control X again. And if you had never have been in there, it'll say Y, and you hit Y. So very similar steps. And then you'd literally just run these last two commands, and you can copy them both at the same time and put them both in. It'll run one and then you hit enter, it'll run the other. It's not too bad, you can go one at a time if you wanna make sure. And then just enter and enter. So basically what that does is it mounts the USB uh, drive to the thumbstick location. So we're creating a virtual mount location for the thumbstick. But now if we were to go in and we were to look at our file explorer again, and we're just gonna grab our F drive and there it is so with that add-on in you actually can mount the USB drive now the next step isn't much harder in fact it's super easy compared to what we just did all right so from the couch to the pie no getting up here we go so when we grab our win SCP from the start menu we open it up Hopefully you've installed it. If you haven't, install it or use your FTP client. We're going to come in here and we're going to go new site. We're going to type in that IP address that we talked about before, which was nine for me. And then we're going to type in the username and we're going to type in the super secret password. Once you do that, you hit log in. Now on your first connect, it'll say, hey, here's that security check again. You hit yes, unless you're not sure that's your pie then don't hit yes now we can go up 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 to two levels above so just to show you again we started here I'm just clicking this little up arrow here it'll bring you in and up and from here we go into the media folder so we just double click that and if you wanted to you can type in slash media you double click the blue bar in SCP and you can actually find that media folder go slash media I like clicking around so I'll just go again back media I'm in uh, the actual location of that is forward slash media if you know Linux if you don't click around like this so if we open the USB in the media hey look at this we're greeted with firmware.cur 
We also have this lovely Windows folder that wasn't there before, but that's fine. Firmware.cur, so I guess all we really have to do is move our firmware over. So there's a few ways I can do that. I can just pop it open on the C drive where I know I've compiled it. And mine's just in the Marlin folder on my C drive there. Go into PIO, build, grab the board, and then I can go down, and I can grab the firmware bin, and now I'm just gonna drop it into that window. And you can see it copied it, it's there. The other way you can do it is um, you can actually grab the file on this side. So if I just go C colon backslash firmware, so again, if I double click, I can enter a path manually, or I can double click and like browse, and it just brings up my little browser, and I can click C. And you don't have to be a super nerd and know where you're typing. So I'm gonna go firmware, Marlin, Marlin, build, right? So PIO, sorry, build, and then into my board, and then down to firmware. Now, I found my firmware bin. If, if I right click firmware bin, I can go upload, or I can click and drag it again. So like if I just grab it, drop it, it'll go, it's done. So I don't want that firmware on this controller, but for you, leave firmware bin there. The next step, and this one is super hard. You have to turn the printer off. You have to cut power to the controller so that it can flash that firmware bin. So there's a few ways that I can I do it. One, if I'm in the room, I just turn the printer off, turn it back on. Problem solved. If I'm away from the room, which I am 90% of my day, all I do is I have an Alexa smart plug switch into my printer. So I think I'm using the iHome ones. And I can turn them on and off remotely through Alexa, through my app, through my smartphone. And you have to power it off just to get that firmware to flash. Once it powers off, and turns back on, guess what? You're flashed, it's done. It's put that new file onto the memory card and away you go. So if something goes wrong, if you flash your firmware and all of a sudden your screen doesn't work, you can always grab the firmware bin file from Big Tree Tech, take that SD card, plug it into your computer, copy it over that way, and then go back to factory and then try your firmware again and just see where you went wrong. Other than that, your firmware is on your controller and life is good. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for sticking around. Now you can update your firmware from the couch. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And most of all, have a good one.